Hey, welcome to another <laughs> serving of owl bear soup. Another heaping. Oh, heaping. It's a soup. You don't heap a soup. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe if it's like a stew, like a, a heaping. Oh, there we go. Like, yeah, I think a stew yeah. could be heaping. I don't know. Stacks of bread nearby, maybe. Oh, yeah. No. Heaping. Uh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Continue uh, the intro. <laughs> I, I don't remember where I was going with that. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I, I'm one of your hosts. I'm Justin. Uh, and I'm Rich, the other host. Yeah. The other host, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> we have a uh, we, we, we have quite the dish for you till today. Uh, we are going to be surfing some news, some previews of a certain sandy role playing game. Dark Sun? No, yeah. Dune. It's Dune. It's Dune. It's Dune. <laughs> it's Dune. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, we're going to have uh, a couple of fantastic guests. Uh, Ross, who is an amazing designer from the DMs Guild. And someone you, might, you all might know as Lenny from the new Pantheon. Uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> but, a little later. Which, which yeah. is a little later, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, or that's Eric. And, uh, and yeah, and that's where we are. Hi. Perfect. <laughs> Exciting. I know, right? It's a. It's been a big week. There's been a whole lot going on for sure. So I'm glad that we are here to uh, to do some more news and reviews. I I feel like you were pro. I mean, I feel out of sorts still from yesterday, um, because of course, uh, late last night, there there was a very sad moment in a, a Pathfinder two game. Oh. <laughs> um, and I I'm I'm reeling. I'm reeling. <laughs> there was an epic moment in a Pathfinder 2 game. So so uh, Rich and I are in a, a, a weekly Pathfinder 2 game that's going to be actually coming to an end uh, in two more sessions. Yeah. So we're getting near the end of the campaign. Uh, things are getting hairy. Things are getting scary. Uh, things are getting wily and wacky. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were in this tower, and my character, Keo, right. an amazing wizard, the best wizard ever, clearly. Just ask him. And that's true. And 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 we and we had to rescue a, a vigilante. Uh, right, we uh, were there for the jailbreak. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, and it was great. We had set up this huge party, this major event, this festival, and then in our vigilante costumes, ran over to the castle to try and break this vigilante. This other, you know, who kind of hates us and tried to kill me once. Anyway, yeah, um, out of the tower, uh -huh. and the tower was not only like filled with haunted, creepy things, so that made it really hard to get out. Um, there was this big fight in the, the second floor, and what was it? It was like this thing with mouths inside its mouths, like tons of mouths, yeah, tons and of it mouths. spit insects at us that had our faces on them, and yeah. I hated every part of that. <laughs> and we couldn't hit it for, for, for the lives of us either. No, no, so, for turns and turns, just yeah. no damage to the thing, just us getting beat up. Yeah, and I think two um, of us got knocked unconscious. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was, yeah, it was DJ regular. Yeah, it was good, wholesome family fun. Uh, <laughs> so then what I did was I set a zombie to explode. I left the mm -hmm. zombie up. I said, we got to get out of here. We went running. The zombie exploded, destroying a teleportation circle that I didn't even know was important, but apparently yeah, it was. Good, good work. <laughs> right? I, my character did something awesome for once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like all super injured. I'm at four hit points. My champion, I'm holding this vigilante like over my shoulder coming down the stairs. We got to get out of here. There's a huge explosion up above. The place is going to burn down. Um, and we step out to the back window that we came through. And there's a legion of troops right outside. Like there's, there's a unit of like 12 archers and their leader who uh, is a jerk. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he he is he is he's my character's illegitimate child too. So this this just makes it extra fun. Uh, and uh, essentially, a I, lot going on. I throw a fireball, and then I get shot down, and I go unconscious. Um, and then uh, then they all come storming in. I tell my companions to run. They run, uh, and then and then uh, they they start to carry me away, and I wake up because I somehow <laughs> rolled a twenty on my check. And uh, and then I decided that I have I have, a, I have a spell called Final Sacrifice, and I took out my my moppet, my my familiar, and I exploded it. So another fireball like explosion on my character, uh, sending right. my character to their final resting place, being a big damn hero and saving the day for everybody. 
It was a very good moment. It was very good. Um, and I think, right, that I love that ending. And of course, we tried to screw it up a little bit uh, and raced in and we're like, We've gotta <laughs> save Keo before we go and performed a medicine check and got a critical failure on it. So, <laughs> so, so I was I was hanging on by a thread, but then and I we just pushed you over. Yeah. <laughs> he was epic enough. Just push yeah. him off the cliff. Done. So we, we like to remember that as Keo's final sacrifice and not uh, a medical mishap. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be back next week with a couple of temporary characters because there's only two sessions left. Mm -hmm. And by I say a couple, uh, <laughs> We'll talk about that more next Sunday. Uh, after yeah, exactly. I, after I <laughs> unveil it to the players and the DM, who doesn't wait. doesn't know what he's getting into with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good way to put it. <laughs> oh man! All right. Wow. Well, uh, let's let's knock out some news real quick before we get to okay, this uh, this Dune um, review. So, uh, you know, big news. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of Hollywood things. Uh, one of the big mm -hmm. things that everybody is uh, talking about, in my social circle at least, is that the D&D movie has started filming. Uh, right. It is starring Chris Pine, and Hugh Grant is going to be the villain? Okay, I I love the first one. I, I hate the first one. I love Jeremy Irons as the villain in the first one. I'll say that yes. out loud. That's one of the best villains, and so I hope Hugh Grant like digs deep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like the really bad sci-fi movies that came after the first one. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. That's really cool. Yeah, I've seen the picture of like the you know the little clacker board that I should. I live in LA. I should know the name of that thing. Um, yeah, so, clacker board. Uh, yeah, little clacker board. So I'm really excited for for that to come out and to learn more about it. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that 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 kind of train right there. And I uh, also you know there is another franchise that is getting a, a cinematic universe and this is uh the vampire the masquerade that's right yeah so uh i i guess it's i i thought it was just going to be tv but i think it's also heading to film as well um and it's uh christine uh boylan is going to be producing us so uh or uh, uh it's and also uh eric uh hesner has Heisner, Heiser, who, uh, okay. who, so this person anyway, they, they, they got an Oscar nomination for writing uh, 2016's The Arrival. So he's cool. helped, helped developing the shared universe uh, with, with, with Christine Boyle. And, and there, uh, I think there's going to be a TV shows. There might be um, movies. So uh, Christine Boylan's known uh, or, or is working alongside, or is she's known for like Punisher, Castle, and Constantine shows, which were all yeah. great. And, and then that's the, exciting to me because that's yeah. like the Punisher was part of like the Marvel Cinematic mm -hmm. Netflix universe. So, so having yeah. that, like maybe we are going to see a vampire and a werewolf and a changeling and everything, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And and then Constantine was an amazing series and should never have gotten cut off. Um, and they're all working with the production company called Hive Mind, who is known for The Witcher and The Expanse. So yeah. uh, there's some pretty good heavy hitters coming in here, giving uh, Werewolf the Masquerade some sweet, sweet TV treatment. And I am into it. <laughs> I'm excited for Werewolf the Masquerade, the perfect crossover. <laughs> werewolf the Masquerade. A werewolf and Vampire, that's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, Werewolf, Vampire, the Masquerade. They've got big fangs, but also nice masks. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what you got? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I got a couple of things. Uh, first of all, today, uh, I wanted to chat real quick because it is the start of uh, Jasper's Game Week. Uh, this started as Jasper's Game Day a little while ago, a, a single day of of streaming events to, to support... Um, uh, suicide prevention awareness, and uh, it's run by by Fenway Jones, who is a, a teenager who just wanted to get this whole thing going. And this year, it has sprawled into an entire week of events. You can check those out at jaspersgameday.com, um, or probably you're seeing you know notes about them on the internet all over the place. So, uh, very cool cause, very cool group, uh, and I'm excited for for them to keep you know growing and growing. Awesome. That's my first one. I know, quick, quick yeah, hits, quick, quick hits, <laughs> quick hits. <laughs> Uh, it, it, um, yeah, so the other thing, uh, something I wanted to bring up, we were talking about charity type stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Black Magic or Black is Magic raises nearly $1 million for charity. So this was, this was Magic the Gathering. They, um, 
they had a, a a bunch of different ways they were selling a special secret lair for magic the gathering um oh. you know there was like different variations on cards all these stuff uh all these proceeds went to organizations like Black Girls Code, and which is a a uh, that helps helps uh, Black women get into uh, STEM fields. So uh, yeah, so that I, I thought that was pretty some some pretty uplifting news. I've been getting a little bit wow. back into magic again, so I've been watching it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I keep, you know, I'm really focused on Kickstarter. So seeing them hit 1 million is like cool and all. This is way better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll say it. Very cool. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, on a Kickstarter note, can I jump into a Kickstarter? <laughs> I didn't yeah. mean to segue, but here we are. Um, I'm really excited. We've been playing this game that's all about politics for the last little bit uh, here in Pathfinder 2. Um, and uh, Kickstarter right now has a game called Court of Blades, which is the tabletop RPG of power politics, gunpowder diplomacy, renaissance magic, and romantic skullduggery. And it is, of course, a, uh, a Blades in the Dark system style game which is a system that i really enjoy um the one of the big things about it is uh is they're they're taking some some cues from different game styles so basically the way to get experience in these games depends on what character class you are so if you decide that uh, that you want to be a you know a big talker who's going to sway the crowd and get them onto your side uh the way you get experience is by doing that so <laughs> it's a thing you really want to kind of focus on. And if you are the magic user trying to use illusions to empower your intrigue, then, you know, get on it. Because that's going to give you kind of the ways to move your character forward. That's such a cool mechanic. Uh, and I love seeing it in, in these style games. Um, and if, I, yeah, tentacle. <laughs> uh, tentacle. Help, help, help <laughs> I'm being attacked. <laughs> There's a tentacle. Ah. <laughs> Um, of course, Blades in the Dark is the game by John Harper where you are playing basically um, a, a fantasy game of leverage. Um, leverage? Ocean's Eleven? Somewhere in there? A heist. That's what you're mm -hmm. up to. Uh, I love the game. Lots of flashback moments to kind of stop you from having to do all the planning in advance. You're just off and heisting as quickly as possible. Um, and this is doing the same thing, but here in the court. Um, PDF is 18 bucks. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and I did... Bad. And I did toss those links in the chat for us. Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm talking about Magic: The Gathering. We should we should definitely mention the fact that uh, Hasbro put out their numbers, and uh, uh, the Watsi uh, Wizards of the Coast segment uh, was 75% uh, of Hasbro's profits in Q1. Right. Also, uh, kind of along with that, in their uh, quarterly kind of wrap up, they mentioned that uh, they might be looking into doing NFTs specifically for magic the gathering and maybe D, &D but there's definitely a big push for it in in magic the gathering uh, uh -huh. and i'm not i'm not gonna buy them if like but you know it, but, <laughs> it, you but, were talking but, about the nfc so i pet a cat i mean that's that's how yeah, i deal yeah. with that <laughs> so but he, but here's 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 the thing is 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 i want to it and i don't know if it's for for uh, magic the gathering art I, I wanted to bring this up because there is a, another collectible card game, and I should have I should have had this prepared. I, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a collectible card game that you can play on. Um, yeah, uh, it, you know, it, yeah, I, I thought they were all already kind of in, NFTs, mm -hmm. um, but there's this other card game that's built on blockchain technology, so it uses some of the same technology to allow you to be able to trade digital cards with other players yeah. and sell digital cards. So right. if they're using NFTs to open up that availability for for trading, like I can trade my digital magic cards since I only play Magic uh, the Gathering Arena, like that would right. be cool. But if they're using it for for just selling art, I'm like, um, I mean, I, 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 I don't quite understand the value there yet. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I've read a little bit about uh, NBA Top Shot, I think it is, is it where they are taking highlight reels and making cards of them and they are limited runs and things like that. And I don't know where that falls in the the tech zone because I, I need cardboard cards. Uh, that's that's as smart as I am. Um, I don't know how the rest of it works, but mm -hmm. apparently it's making them a ton of money. So I, it wouldn't surprise me that Hasbro is checking it out. Um, but, uh, you know. Yeah. And yeah, Gail. <laughs> yeah, and Galen Drell, the uh, the NFTs are using the same kind of technology as Bitcoin, yeah, yeah. so they do burn a lot of electricity. Um, yeah, 
but there's yeah. but there's you know arguments on like both sides of like well electricity versus like how much other crap we use whenever we're making dollars but i don't know it's 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 all i i'm not into it i i, I don't know if if it's going to become a thing like bitcoin seems to be becoming a thing right right um i'm keeping an eye on it but i'm not i'm not sold on on its on its viability yet yeah oh goodness Ugh. learning stuff about what people are up to it's wild yeah <laughs> um let's see what else we got uh we got a couple minutes left for news um yeah. definitely you you had posted the view of the Van Richten's guide to Ravenloft was posted. There is a, a pretty large table of contents at the very least. I've seen Lisa Penrose talk a little bit about some of the design changes they've made for the different domains of dread on Twitter. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming there. Yeah, and I've tossed a link to that. Uh, it was on the Ian World where I saw it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, toss the link in the chat for people to go check out. That's uh, And uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'm... I, we'll, we'll we'll see. I, I'm I'm very impressed that they they've decided to dive deep into Ravenloft, but the yeah. Raven the two last Ravenloft releases went relatively well for them. But it so it's kind of interesting to see where D and D five E is right now as compared to where it may have been like in the fourth edition and in the in the third edition. I don't know that we would have gotten two Ravenloft books out of fourth edition yeah. if it was if it was set up like this. Right. And especially this is this is one of the first ones where they have decided to to make a Gazette book. This one doesn't have a native adventure in it, although it does talk a lot about running horror adventures. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just like, you know, giving a lot more life to that world, creating a lot of different character creations. You know, we're seeing the the hex blood is going to show up in this book as we kind of, you know, imagined. Um, <laughs> So there's there's a lot of cool stuff that will enhance your Ravenloft game in here, but at the same time, it's just it's different than like the you know the the Ravnica book they put out or Theros or something like that. It's it's the first big addition to a campaign setting that I, I think I've seen them do. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah, no, neither was I, and that's I, I think that's part of why I'm like, wow, how 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 did this happen? Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not against it. So, you know, that is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that Rudolf Van Richten is a, a reindeer? I, I see them here in the, the table of contents as a mist wanderer, and I would be really excited if it was just Rudolf, the red-nosed that, reindeer. That, uh, that, you that, see them in the mists. <laughs> I, that would be hilarious if there was some reference to like the red nose and, and all that stuff, too. That would <laughs> yeah. be fantastic. Um, let's see here. Uh, so for folks who are into organized play and specifically like Starfinder Society and Pathfinder Society, uh, they are removing fame. Uh, fame is going to move to an achievement points style system. If you have what? fame, yeah. So if you have fame for any of your characters, the fame will carry over. You can still spend it. But the big reason of doing this is that... Um, uh, they, they rely on the data that they get from the reporting system and it kind of helps influence the story. And, you know, the fame kind of is a harder measurement for it. Also, like there's a lot of boons and a lot of certain items that like you can only get at conventions and stuff. And this gives right. them another way to to be able to give these out to folks. You know, the, 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 the one that they point out in their press release is that, uh, you know, that we can't ask our Australian players to fly to Indianapolis just sure. for the chance to yeah. play their favorite species. So it's supposed to help clean up that. And I think that's good, especially in this in this time where we're doing a lot more online play. And I don't think the online play yeah. is going to go anywhere at this point. I think I, I think, think it's so. it's still just going to be a really strong component of uh, of our gaming. There will definitely be plenty of gaming in person, but that is wild. I mean, I I remember <laughs> going into some of these like thinking about how I'm going to maximize my fame because that's of course tells you how strong of magic items you can actually purchase in the game. If your fame is low, you are stuck with low level uh items and it's it's very frustrating i don't know exactly how it went in starfinder but moving to yeah. an achievement based system sounds sounds actually really positive <laughs> yeah it'll be interesting and i'm definitely going to check it out uh, i love starfinder i'll probably hop into some some starfinder society games yeah play those see 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 how it all feels um yeah and check it out very cool cool uh i have one more bit to go over i'm full of news this week uh, you are <laughs> uh necromunda high war is uh should be available to pre-order soon 
this is a uh, a skirmish size game. There's two games games workshops done that I love more than anything, and that's uh you know that's one of them is Necromunda, uh and uh, the other one. Wow, why can I not? I'm so bad at words today. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Necromunda is a skirmish shot uh, size sci-fi game in uh, the Warhammer world. Uh, mm -hmm. Necromunda is a hive city where there's so many different levels and you're just trying to survive. It's got to be Blood Bowl. It's not Blood Bowl. Um, and uh, though Blood Bowl is a ton of fun. It, yeah. And it's just a new starter set with some really cool terrain and mm -hmm. uh, everything you need to get two, two people playing. So I'm hoping I can wrangle someone up here whenever we're all shot up that we can uh, do this. That's I will cool. say... I will say the, the the other Games Workshop game that I love so much is almost exactly Necromunda, but it's the fantasy version. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> uh, fair enough. I did play Necromunda uh, back in high school. Um, I do like it. It was the first like skirmish-style tactical-based miniature game I ever played. Um, Warhammer Quest is mine. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> that wins. Blood Bowl, pretty close, though. <laughs> Blood Bowl is pretty close. All right. Yeah. Well, um, you know, before we jump into the next section... Uh, just want to make sure everybody out there has joined the Exploration Society and swung on over to our Patreon, uh, signed up there. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it, that way you can be on top of all the cool adventures and all the fun things that we're, we're going to be doing here over in the Saving Thirds show. Also, uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube or if you're even watching it down in the chat today, make sure to pop over to our um, YouTube channel and give us a sub subscribe over there. Uh, you know, it's 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 sometimes a little little flustering to see that only like ten percent of the people who or twenty percent of the people who watch our videos are subscribers. So like, come on. Yeah. So anyway, get in there. We got lots of good stuff to say. Yeah. <laughs> we can't stop talking. You no. know us. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gave both me and you a mic. That was a mistake. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get it. Let's get over to 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 this preview. Let's. Uh, All right. Let's let's talk a little bit about dune all right so uh we got the uh dune rpg from mophidius modifius modifius thank you right? I'm, I'm never gonna <laughs> say that right uh but it but uh, yeah it's a fantastic book um i so i we, we were actually talking in the green room before this where i think that i no longer like running fantasy rpgs I think I like running science fan or, you know, uh, science fantasy. Uh, okay. So, you know, Star Wars falls in there. Dune falls in there. And there is so much in this book that I just love. Um, yeah. You, you, if you look at the table contents here that's up right now, uh, you can, you know, there's 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 just so much lore uh, about the Dune, Dune uh, setting. And you go through and it breaks it down by even uh, like eras. So you have like information about the different eras and then which books uh, <laughs> to read so that you know about those eras. Um, you know, and, and then last week we did the, the fallout book. Uh, we looked at right. the fallout book and then comparing these side to side, um, you know, this book where fallout, it felt really fun. It felt really appropriate for the setting this does too uh this feels very yes. premium very you know everything they've done it kind of leans into like the political intrigue side of things while not taking away a, 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 from the harsh survival that is that is dune and it's all in the uh d20 system mm -hmm. which is really cool i love how this gets started right because a lot of a lot of games give you variants right the world has all these different factions and that's when i think about dune that's it like all the different houses vying mm -hmm. for control um this one immediately at the start it says hold off on building your characters you're all going to be from the same house like let's let's focus on that let's build yeah. let's build a house together that you're all going to be part of decide how powerful it's going to be whether you are in ascendance or not and then build your characters within that framework and it just it just reminds me of the the approach that I would always take when when I was running birthright games. Uh, which which realm are you going to be controlling? And once you're there, let's let's talk about that and then get our characters invested. So already it shows me that like 
yeah, politics are going to matter. Your mm -hmm. relationships to the other houses will be as important as your characters' relationships to other characters. Yeah, and it, it, it has Freeman in here as well. As mm -hmm. as and, and Freeman, are, of course, not part of any of the houses. And those are the 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 folks from the planet Arrakis, which is Dune, right. and. <laughs> Yeah, it's Doontown. Just, it's Doontown. <laughs> and uh you, you you do have the option to play those, but you can only like you can only play them if you're in certain eras and only with the DM permission and you have to figure out how they fit within the system. And it's 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 a ton of fun. I've I've really dug going through this book. Um yeah. whereas we said, you know, the Fallout one, it spent a lot of time on the um on the equipment, on the gear on that type of stuff this one is just so so deep on like the planets the houses the mm -hmm. different uh factions even within the houses you know the jesuit sisters you know sisterhood going through a lot of that stuff too yeah. uh it's uh it's just it's it's so cool and um you and you'll see them up here uh next to me kind of flashing like i some of the uh oh man i i i love a book with really good art in really good layout and yeah. currently we're seeing uh you know kind of the chapter layout and i think that's just beautiful you know we have the chapter a little bit about what's going on this beautiful image in this great like setting i i also <laughs> i i will also prattle on about like box layouts if the boxes are laid mm -hmm. out very well so this is definitely a thing for me um yeah it's it's just it's wild i love it yeah it's really good i i'm really happy because when you know uh whenever I see a, a system come out and then being very quickly to like license different IPs for that system, I always wonder, you know, how close are they going to be to each other? You know, if I play two different versions, will it feel different? Or will I just feel like I have a core instinctive understanding of what's going on and be able to use that, right? Um, and, uh, and this is fantastic. Like both of these coming from Modiphius, they really, really, like you said, they feel different. They're going to play differently. Mm -hmm. And I... I'm just excited about that. Like looking over this adventure that they have in here, of course, um, uh, it is not at all <laughs> a Fallout adventure. And it's really cool that the system is broad enough to incorporate both of those. Yeah. I Yeah. It, it, yeah let's talk about the D20 or 2D20 system real quick for folks that weren't here last time. Sure. So the way the 2D20 system it works is your, well, in this in this case, in, in Fallout, you had three dice. You had two D20s and a D6. In this one, you just have the two D20s. They don't they don't have the the, the special die. So uh, what you have is you have an attribute and a skill, and your storyteller will tell you to roll. Uh, you need to roll X, Y, or Z, and you then you say, okay, well, this is my you know intelligence, and this is my uh, my podcasting skill. So uh, I have to roll under that skill <laughs> and get a certain amount of successes. And, you know, I, and I tend to fail to do that, but it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, you know, so, so it's kind of, it's an interesting system. And I, 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 as a person who's, who's played a lot of Shadowrun, a lot of World of Darkness, I, I love different styles of rolling instead of uh -huh. trying to get high. Like, I like the fact that we're trying to get low on these 2D20 and you get right. that one and that's when something awesome happens. Uh, you get that 20 and that's when something not so awesome happens. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. When you said podcasting, I thought you meant pod racing because I'm thinking about a desert world and it just got real bad in my head real quick. Um, <laughs> I was like, that's not, that's not Dune. Dune, pod racers of Dune. It's not a now, book. <laughs> now, now that's what I call pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a section in here that I really like, which is about the nature of conflict. Um, oh, and it yeah. talks about how there are, whenever you're looking at a conflict, and that can be a, a duel, it can be a, an espionage task, a skirmish, um, it could just be war, right? It could be huge. Um, that they all have similarities and kind of the rules are going to, to put those together. Like talk about the scope of what that conflict might look like, consider what your assets are in these conflicts, you know, talk about the zones of the conflict that they take over. Um, and uh, and that's going going to allow you to think really carefully about what your actions are like and how the entire thing works. I just I really really appreciate that it's got that kind of breadth to it. You know um, that it's all kind of part of the same thing. As long as there's opposition, which mm -hmm. social social engagement has opposition to it. So shouldn't those rules reflect what a combat is going to be like anyways? And they're just kind of digging in and saying, uh, yeah yeah, it's just actions. You just have moves. Just take your moves. And I mm -hmm. love that style of gameplay that we see here. Yeah, I it. it... Uh, you know, and, and we keep touching on this and I just, I just can't, 
you know, talk about this enough is, 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 is the way you start building your character. I, I just love that so much. It's like, no, no, build your house, mm-hmm. think your house out. And then once you figure, once you get your house in order, then you can start filling it with people and you're one of those people. And, you know, they, it, it gives, it gives the DM or the, the storyteller this cool opportunity to include politics in a fun way. Uh, not mm-hmm. just uh, in multiple ways, it, but but in fun ways to to your characters, right? Because you not only will you have house politics, but then you'll have intra house politics, and right. then you know galactic or whatever politics. Like uh, it's it's just it's it's wild, um, you know. It, it, and and when you kind of when you're kind of doing this, you can pick like House Hartonian, right? And uh, there is a big long like. It's not just one page; it's multiple pages talking about each of these houses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so good, uh, and uh, you know, it, it, I just I just don't know what to say about. It. I'm actually like it's great. You were really excited about the Fallout one, and I have as I've kind of dug into this more, <laughs> I'm more excited about this than I was about the Fallout one. Now, it's gonna definitely be a different style of story, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Fallout, I've got like some cool one shots in mind. This one, oh my, I, you know, the house section, I was just looking through it. And again, like looking at like, there's all the roles for the house. I mean, here's an envoy. Here's exactly what their rights and responsibilities are. Like an envoy needs to have a keen grasp on the state of the universe outside the confines of their house, right? Uh, the the heirs, the chief physicians, right? Which, which mm-hmm. people can they talk to easily? Um, and I just love that that's all in here because it just reminds me of, of some of my favorite political games. Yeah, and and you and you, I mean, you said you've oh. you've run a lot of birthright. Could you mm-hmm. take some of that? You know, like could you take some of that birthright information and go, all right, well, here we go. This is this is now what we're doing. Uh, so we we have now have House Harkonian against this new house that you just made up with your PCs, and they're going right. up against each other, right? You know, that's that's definitely the kind of thing you can you can bring into this. Uh, yeah, because yeah. Because there is a sense of your houses can get more important and get more prestige as time passes. And that's, mm-hmm. that's I mean, not exactly what, what that game was about, but, uh, but not far off. And again, I do love that it's not, you know, Birthright is, here's D&D. Also, we need a mass battle set of rules. And we need, like, realm magic. And they added these extra systems to the side of D&D. And I love that this is just, like, it's basically all the same thing, you know? <laughs> if you want to smack someone, that's the same thing as, I'm going to send my battalion forward to attack, you know? the other battalion it's just a big smack <laughs> it's just it's all, it's 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 all smack roll a die <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh man yeah it, uh, I, so I, cool. I, I i'm looking forward to reading through this book and learning more about the dune setting because mm-hmm. the folks who put this together have just done so much research and they have so much information in here like it goes into the the ways in that uh the culture of the different houses is even yeah. like you know, if you're if you're with this house, it's going to be you know you're 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 going to be expected to act this way, and these are, right. you know, the the things that you may may uh, may kind of get uh, get wrapped up in. Absolutely. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Well, it's so good. I'm just too excited now. Yeah. You've turned me around on this one. um because you know i I, i'm sure that i read i read dune probably the same time i read foundation when it was just a like i I don't know uh let's just read like the the big ones i haven't read those before (laughs) um and so i kind of went through and did like a a sci-fi legends of sci-fi sort of deal um Mm -hmm. but it was a long time ago so i don't actually remember the world but like starting to see this and the way that they've they've made it clear that i don't need to know everything about like house harkonnen or whatever um I mean, it's going to tell me enough, and my own house is going to be a cool, unique thing that I'm going to build together with my party. So, uh, like, that gives me a lot of comfort that I'm going to be able to jump into this and and know what's going on. Which yeah. is also a thing I like about these kind of settings. Yeah, and and and, and they they also do a good job of uh, talking to you about when you're creating NPCs as as the game master. And this is this is mm-hmm. one of the 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 cool portions of this book. And I think this could be used in other D and D campaigns, other systems it's you know creating non-player characters so what what they're talking about is the first section is all about make them believable so you know yeah. uh ready Re- so what is their position is the first question you kind of ask yourself second question you ask yourself what is their name and what is their pronouns right so you know and then where do they live and then where have they lived all their lives 
uh, you know, it does this character value power. And, and so as you uh -huh. kind of go through these things, and that's just make them believable. And then they have a section that just says manage diversity. And this it talks about, it says, the world of Dune is vast and large, filled with unique characters that have different needs. Embrace that diversity and make it apparent in your game without relying on two-dimensional tropes. And I think that's a, a very important, that's a very important chunk of text right there. And yeah. I think everyone should kind of think about that, right? Um, <laughs> whenever they're, they're, they're doing these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. And, and, and they say some things to keep in mind. Replicating accents that are not your own might dampen the mood of the game. Um, so instead, just try changing the pitch of your voice or the speed at which you talk, that type of stuff. Um, it, 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 you, you can use uh, different languages, but make sure that they're not mockeries of languages that you might know in real life. Uh, sexuality and romance can look different between characters. Who are they attracted to, if anyone? Do they have one partner, multiple partners, no partners? It, you know, it, it goes into all these really cool things. It says include different or people of different color, right? You know, it goes through all these cool things to remember as, as you're, you're, you're painting the tapestry that is your, your setting, that is your, your game when you're around the table to make sure and, and think about these things as you're creating um as as you're creating these npcs yeah i like that a lot because it's not just a small reminder at the start of the the game you know it doesn't no. just say like remember let's let's be let's be um let's be be open and respectful and do these things it's no they're putting it in here as you're running this game it's your job like develop the tapestry you know yeah and i i really i appreciate that in the book <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and the, I, I like this warning too that that I I feel like some some DMs really need to remember um, is don't let the NPCs take over the adventure. Yeah, that's not it's not your NPCs' stories. You introduce them to 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 have problems that the players have solutions for. Mm -hmm. uh, you introduce them to act as guides as messengers. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, you can have them to be you know almost like the hand of God coming in saving the day. But so long as it moves the story along for the players, right? Yeah, because um, that's that's going to be a downside to any of these stories that are set in a, a campaign world with pre-existing NPCs, right? Of course, you want to play with the people from the books, right? So you that's why you pick that era. You know, that's kind of a fun thing. But yeah, they can't be the stars of the show, even though they're the stars of the books. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're 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 you're, you're, you're not going to be playing, uh, you know, uh, the Jesuit Reverend Mother from the books. Yeah, uh, you're you're. You're you're hopefully going to see a different one, and right. uh, you know the sisterhood will prevail. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Wait, is that how that goes? <laughs> I thought Baron Harkonnen prevailed. I thought that was the way it went. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, very cool. Well, I'm excited about that. That does look really good. I'm glad. I mean, Dune's got that's had such a huge resurgence. I mean, we got the movie coming out. We got the the board game that came out last year, the year before, mm -hmm. uh, which I took a look at, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. For Make for movie. a fun couple of game nights. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for the new Dune movie. I'm I like a lot, a lot. <laughs> Good. Um, Good. All right. So, oh, I see what was going on there. I was like, why is that? You were looking at my notes. All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, with that little bit of spice in the bowl, I think it's time to move to our next ingredient. Wait, that was the first time we said spice, that whole review. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was saving that. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's see. I'm going to do a quick check in the green room. Uh, yeah, it looks like everybody's there. So uh, if you're ready, let's let's go to our first guest. Sounds good. All right. Welcome. Welcome to Owlbear Soup. Ross, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm always excited for this type course. of thing. Hello, chat. I can't oh, yes. see you, but I, but you can see me. So hi. <laughs> <laughs> They're being real nice, as usual. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to have you on. Uh, it's been a... Uh, my gosh, I, how long have I known you? It feels like a long time because uh, I, of course, have been aware of, of your products on the DMs Guild forever. <laughs> Yeah, I think the first exposure I had to your work was when you did the podcast, and I learned that you had done a segment on the Draco Knight, which actually That's wasn't right. the first time you'd covered one of my products, because you'd done the sculptor <laughs> before that, yeah. but I hadn't heard, I hadn't 
no one told me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> right. um, but uh, but you are of course uh, a fantastic designer of of D and D products on the DMs Guild, which for those that don't know, it is a a place where anyone can get on and and create their own products and and sell them using D and D properties. Right. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to, if you want to build only a Ravenloft edition, edition, but yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's a pretty fantastic deal, and there have been some amazing authors who have used it to like really build up an incredible portfolio. And you're absolutely one of them. Like if I look at your credits, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been on it for four years now, so yeah, you're bound, yeah. bound to get a little bit prolific. Uh, I, mean... But I mean, it's so weird hearing me like getting compared to the giants. I don't consider myself to be on the same level as like Benjamin Huffman or M.T. Black. But apparently I sell nearly as well as some of them, which is very strange to me. Right. <laughs> There's, it's an incredible program and you've done really, really well. And I think uh, a lot of it is because when, you know, when we are playing D&D &D and building characters, we want to come up with super cool options. And <laughs> when I saw the sculptor for the first time, right, uh, and talk about it a little bit, but the, the sculptor is this class where you get to build your super cool weapon, right? Uh, yes. Make, yes. you know, form it shimmering out of the air, this massive, ridiculous thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh, that's perfect. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit of fame uh, four years ago on the Unearthed Arcana subreddit because I was the only person trying to make a different type of intelligence-based half caster. Yeah, uh, right. And that, that's what that's what the sculptor was. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was fantastic. And you've you've built so many different player options that I think that it makes it so easy to just look at your work and go like, ah, hold on, Draco Knight? What? Uh, yeah, tell me more. <laughs> like, get, me, get me involved in that. <laughs> um, well, thank you. So, uh, yeah, how many, how many, let's see. Oh, wow. Can you tell me how many full classes you've designed at this point? So there are eight currently on the Dungeon Masters uh -huh. Guild, seven that are standalone, and one that was released as part of the Honor and Devotions collaboration I did with uh, David Adams back in, I think that was 2018? Is yeah, I we think did so. That? <laughs> my yeah. God, three years ago now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but wild. my ninth is coming soon. Very, very soon. Okay. It's actually in the layout phase right now. So I'm probably like two, three weeks, the, my ninth full class will be out. Fantastic. Um, harder question. Are you ready? How many okay. subclasses do you think you've made at this point? <laughs> oh. um, I mean, if we're talking uh, like for the official stuff, I can tell you that released, I did uh, eight for each of the three uh, uh, complete handbooks that I wrote with Benjamin uh -huh. Huffman. So that's 24. And then I also wrote a standalone subclass for the Barbarian called Path of the Liver Eater. That's on the Dungeon Masters Guild. So 25, if you're just talking uh, the official classes. Sure, sure. I just, could not you know, even. As many, yeah. Sorry, I, I could not <laughs> even begin to tell you uh, how many, because I mean, just for the Sculptor Remaster alone, to bring it into that, which is a product that is probably going to be released later this summer, I wrote uh, 15 new subclasses just for that product. So there's yeah. going to be 24 total subclasses in that product. So I just, oh my I, I, I just love doing it. <laughs> That's great. I mean, we take a look at the player's handbook. 24 is not far off from the number that are in the player's handbook. So you, you're you developing just tons and tons of really cool, flavorful options for people. It's, it's fantastic. I, I mean, my brand is Outlandish Adventure Productions. So I always try to think a little bit outside the box, break the mold a little bit, see, see okay. what I can break in order to build something new, you know? Yes. So so tell me a little bit more. As, as someone who is like, you know, creating these like captivating creative ideas, I used to create too many times. I apologize. Um, <laughs> how, um, how do you, like, where does this inspiration strike you? Like, where, could you tell us, like, you know, did, did the sculptor come from somewhere in particular? Um, uh, so, yeah, the sculptor was actually a really interesting thing. So I didn't begin homebrewing at all until around 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ha I, was, I had just finished uh, student teaching, and I, and I realized homebrew was an option. Uh, for like creating your own stuff. Right. <laughs> and so I realized, because uh, I'm a very math person, I went to college for math education. I know you know that experience, Rich. <laughs> and so Indeed. I noticed, like many people noticed, that uh, every martial class, except for the Barbarian, had a magical third casting subclass. There's the Eldritch right. Knight, there's the Arcane Trickster, there's the Way of the Four Elements. Uh, and I'm just like, you know what? I want to write a magic Barbarian. So I, I wrote, uh, really, in retrospect, Awful, 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 awful subclass <laughs> called Path of the Fury Mage. 
Um, and it was an intelligence-based half caster in the very similar vein as the Eldritch Knight. Uh, but one of the one of the ideas I had for that was if let's say you get caught with your pants down, you don't have a weapon, they could actually like form a weapon out of magic. Right. And you can probably, knowing the sculptor, see kind of the inspirations there. Um, mm -hmm. And so eventually I started getting to the ideas of, okay, full classes. Um, well, there isn't an intelligence-based half caster and I see everyone else just trying to make spell swords. So what if I do something <laughs> different? What, 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 what's some mm -hmm. unexplored territory? I think back, what if they make their own weapon out of magic? Uh, and then from yeah. there, I started iterating on what kind of person would want to make their weapon out of magic. And I think, oh my goodness, they can personalize <laughs> it. This could be like a battle artist, someone that like literally creates something personal to them and then can create other objects out of their, out of yeah. magic as well. And that's where the sculpture came from. That's fantastic. I just, I, I love it because the... Um... <laughs> creating a subclass, right? You're starting with, with a base that already exists and it's kind of yes. like, all right, what's, what, you know, what, uh, what monk school could I do that hasn't really, you know, somewhere in the space, somewhere goes a little bit different, but it's still a monk. But uh, mm -hmm. by building a whole new class, you're, you're like ground up. You could change almost anything that you wanted <laughs> in there. Um, which yeah, is, I, I've you know, certainly done a few very experimental uh, builds with my full classes. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Odic, uh, which is what my, my first sure. full spellcasting <laughs> class, I designed out of pure spite for the Unearthed Arcana subreddit, which I really began falling out of love with a couple of years ago because of just how uh -huh. toxic the community was getting. Yeah. Um, everyone was trying to create health-based spellcasters um, like, that didn't use spell slots, but used uh, their health. Uh, and people were getting really toxic about that concept. And I saw a comment that was like, stop trying this. It can't be done. <laughs> so I went into Excel and I spent 50, five, zero hours <laughs> designing formulas uh, to make it work. And that's where right. the Odic came from. And then that's for the Accursed, probably my most popular and famous uh, class to date, um, the challenge I went in with was, can I create something that has inherent permanent drawbacks and make mm -hmm. it fun for the person to play? And given the popularity, I would say I think I did pretty well on that front. <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. That's very cool. Um, and I, I love that all of these just do, I mean, they immediately, right? When I go to the DMs Guild and I look around and I see an adventure and the story sounds good, I'm like, cool, I could, I'm could. i gonna get that and uh, I'll study it, I'll run it, okay, down the road. But like a player option, you pick that up and you design a character day one, right? You just, yes. that's the kind of thing that you can sit down with and like embrace and start working with immediately, uh, which yeah, I just that, love. Like you're just making players happy right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is the magic of doing player option design, just like mm -hmm. designing for people. Because I know so many people that just create characters in their spare time and they're just constantly right. looking for new and fun things to bring their ideas to life. Yeah. Oh, huh. very. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, let's see. So, uh, what was my next? Oh, it was on the, 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 the Odic. Absolutely. I love the, the challenge, ex uh, challenge accepted of this whole thing. Uh, you were talking a little <laughs> bit about, uh, the community, right? And, and this is a thing that we know as, as DMs Guild, like you're a master. I'm a, I'm a tinkerer. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. But, uh, but there is a big thing about the, the word homebrew, you said it first, uh, yes. that people aren't sure if they should be buying these things, if they are good enough to sit on in the same table as like the official options, right? Your D&D &D should stay true to D&D &D and not, you know, I'm not going to buy these. I'm not going to use them. Even if I change some house rules, that's like, it's a house rule thing. Um, and I loved actually, uh, what was it? it was just over a year ago, I think, when uh, when you started an Eberron campaign and I got to sit down and play a sculptor, you know, at a table with people who were, it's just like putting it all together makes me feel so good. Like that, that you've <laughs> done something fantastic with these classes and they stand up and they really do. <laughs> and in, in my home games, I actually have four different uh, accursed characters throughout, <laughs> throughat the games I'm throughout writing. The games. Because the classes... <laughs> Uh, the class is so variable and just lets you tell really interesting, fun stories, at least I think. Yeah. And my players seem very happy. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so let's see. So uh, so with all this stuff in the past, um, you also have a partnership, right? Uh, you don't just do stuff on your own, right? You also create the, yes. the complete handbooks. Um... Yep. <laughs> I was right? very lucky back in 2017. I only, uh, I mean, this was late 2017. So I'd only had about like 10 months of designing under my belt, but I had a pre-existing relationship with Benjamin Huffman, 
because back in 2016, when the guild was first getting started, I found this, the, the pugilist class, as many, many yeah. other people did, given that it's mm -hmm. the best selling class option on the entire site. Um, I think the, is that the only adamantine seller like on that level? I'm pretty sure it was the first adamantium seller on the entire yeah. site, let alone character options. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I connect, I saw that. I was so impressed with professionalism. So I went and connected with him on Patreon and actually got a lot of advice for getting started. He introduced me to his layout designer, Nathaniel Rue. And that's actually who oh, I course, used to lay out for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and so 10 months later, uh, when I, after I uh, put my first sculptor out there and went on this huge design binge, I released like five classes in the space of, space of maybe four months. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, he invited me to uh, for a project that he was calling the Complete Handbook series, and he had uh, he had uh, handbooks on his blog website: a Marshallist handbook, a Devout handbook, and an Arcanist handbook. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to kind of remaster those, get a little like get a partner, and I was lucky enough to be chosen. And that's it's, fantastic. It's been amazing doing those books over the past three years, and now. Mm -hmm doing the ultimate adventurer's handbook, which is going okay. to, yes. Uh, so which is actually going to take the content from all three previous handbooks and be released alongside 42 new subclasses, <laughs> more <laughs> items, more feats, yeah. more spells. It's literally, we're going to nearly double, if not more than double the previously existing content in this book. Wow. 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 <laughs> and I mean, honestly, looking at these, right, on DM's Guild, the Complete Martialist Handbook, uh, I can't remember if that's the first one out of the three that you made. It is, um, yes. But the, the PDF on here is is 12 bucks, right? Like the barrier mm -hmm. to entry for players or for people who want to just jump in and get these products and like start adding them to their games. You, it's very sellable, right? Very purchasable. I want it, right? Uh, yeah. So I love that you've got that mentality to it. And it's still, a, that is a platinum seller, right? It's It's... Yeah, it's, it's clearly it's been people a while love what you're ride. doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, and it's been also been crazy because like the Dungeon Masters Guild has featured the complete handbook covers on advertisements that they've done for, like for their right. own site. Yeah. Uh, and what's even crazier is they apparently have so much confidence in the product that before we'd even written a new single word for UAH, they mm -hmm. pre-approved us for print on demand. So we're Perfect. actually going to be able to Perfect. own the Ultimate Adventures Handbook like in physical copy, and I'm out of my mind excited to be able to have that, <laughs> that is and send a copy to everyone i know <laughs> that is fantastic well you you've got these these three releases coming up right um where can people find out how to purchase them for themselves um so i am on several different social media platforms uh, primarily twitter discord and patreon um so my twitter is at outland advent pr because unfortunately outlandish adventure productions would not fit in the text box <laughs> um <laughs> And so on, and in my pinned post on Twitter, there's links to both my Patreon where I actually do exclusive monthly releases in addition to exclusive previews. And then also I have a discord where you'll be able to join the community and where I do a lot of announcements. Yeah, perfect. Well, great. I, I hope that people do check in on this because like I said, like adding these options to your game is such a fantastic way to, <laughs> I, I don't know, just it's like, I love, there's just so many power fantasies in here, like so many different ways to play and I, I you can, I'll just let your imagination go wild. Check the DMs Guild, find good stuff, um, including all of yours. So uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for making them. Uh, thanks for joining us. You're going to stick around uh, for our oh, adventure yeah. writing in a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Good. I'm glad to see it. <laughs> see how wacky we can get. <laughs> um, but uh, check in the green room. It looks like we are ready to, to flip it over uh, to Justin and Eric. Hello, everybody. I am joined here today by uh oh you know what i didn't do was i didn't confirm how to actually pronounce your last name so i could take a dive at it but uh i i, I think i i think i'll just leave it to you i'm just gonna say i'm here with eric eric is known for playing lenny on new pantheon which is coming up next so you should stick around uh and i have a lot of other cool information about you such as you've been with saving throw show for what's it 36 years and you have been streaming role-playing games since then as well. You, uh, all your, uh, you, you, you didn't have any friends, so you decided to move to LA. And uh, Eric, I can't, have you said anything yet? Or am I just talking over you? 
Oh, okay. Well, I do not hear. I do not hear you. Let's see here. Let me keep. Oh, okay. Well, while Eric uh, reconnects, I will continue to make up stories about them. And uh, we'll see what happens. So <clears throat> let's see here. So everybody knows Eric from uh, New Pantheon. He plays Lenny. Uh, recently, and we're, we're going to hopefully get to talk about this uh, shortly, is uh, that... Uh, ooh, are you back? I don't know. Am I? Uh, I can hear you. I Good. think that means the rest of the world can hear you too. Yeah. All right. There we go. <laughs> Halfway through the show, like all the sound died in Chrome. And I was like, I'll restart it. I'm I can't test it though to see if it works on stream. So I'll just hope it <laughs> fixed itself. Oh man. Yeah. Well, it 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 didn't. So um I was just uh I was talking about I was just talking about your last the last episode of of New Pantheon. And we got to learn a little bit. You know, it's something that Lenny has touched on, but we got to learn a little bit more about Lenny and his 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 older brother. Uh, can can you give us a little little de little more details on 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 what happened in that show? Yeah, we we came up like basically uh, in the in this particular episode, we had a character who uh, was a a a rabbit who was a like a, a god trapped in a rabbit's body that ha had sacrificed itself in the end of the last season and we were going to rescue them and bring them back and my character and this is this would be the second time we've brought someone back to life in the show so my character very was like yep yeah, is that a hard thing to do because it seems like we've done it a couple of times because i know somebody i would love to not have not be dead and people are like uh, uh who and then it like it was like well probably my brother yeah probably because <laughs> i just uh it 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 was a thing that like just kind of popped up in role playing like a session a few sessions back someone was like oh do you have any siblings and like the my first response was going to be no but then i was like what's a more interesting thing i was like uh yeah i do or i did but they passed away and then as i like the weeks of thinking about that like started filling in all these holes about like my character and like who he was and why he is the way he is. And it, it helped make things like contextually make more sense about who he was and like his relationship to, to his parents and like everything about him. I'm like, Oh, this actually solves a lot of issues. Yeah. And you also talked a little bit about your relationship with not just your goddess, but also the, the, the relationship uh, you and your goddess have with alcohol. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's weird because his 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 deity is Ninkasi, the Sumerian goddess of beer. Uh, and originally, like my my idea for the character was like he's this like football player jock who parties and stuff like that. But then I was like, that's like as I play it, obviously that's not what it turned into. And just the idea of like alcohol and, and or like drugs in general as something that's not like not just an escapism, not just like something you're doing to hide from reality, but as a, as a, as a means of opening yourself up to aspects of your life that you're not normal. Like, like, like the medical, like not that alcohol should ever be used as like self-medication, but like how it, it can be sometimes, you know, it's like it, it can be a, a thing that relaxes you. It can opens you up to conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I thought, I thought that was, I, I thought that was a really cool, like, it was uh, it was about what ten minutes, and it was just this 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 focus on your character, and you know it in through that little little chunk, you you could see exactly what you pointed out was was the growth of this character. You started out, you know, I you know I I haven't watched all of them, but I was expecting you to be a little bit broy, a little bit like you know uh, kind of a, the annoying one in the group, but but it really it was a really cool moment where it, it, where it showed some of the growth and some of the camaraderie between you and the other characters as well. Yeah. I think that character as a whole has been like, it started out as like, you know, he's the captain of the football team and, you know, as the goddess of beer living in with side of him. But then like, as you play that character, you're like, well, that's, that's a one dimensional person. Like what, what does this person feel? How does, what does this person believe? What is like, so it like started with like just little things. It became like a joke that like his dad doesn't really like him, which turned into like a very serious thing about like, about the nature of, of parenthood and like, like trying to, to, to like gain your parents approval. And like, like, then it's like, okay, so every decision is him trying to impress his dad who will can't. I mean, it's like, so it just slowly expands until you have a fully fleshed out human being. 
Yeah, and is this normally a, a, a tact that you take with your characters? Is, yeah, you, is yes. you go one dimensional and then yeah. as you're playing it, it? Yeah, yeah. usually I start as a, as a joke character that turns into an incredibly serious character. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, in Pirates of Salt Bay, my character was Dury Hank, who was just, uh, he was a, a drunken master monk dwarf. And he was just this like dirty, like he just like slept outside. He drank a lot and he, he fought and he was a pirate. And then it became this whole thing of like, like he was abandoned as a child, like he raised by pirates. So that's why he's so messed up. He doesn't know how to read. And like, it's like slowly becomes like, the, like learns to like center himself and become very Zen over the course of that show uh yeah and speaking of that uh are i think we're going to be seeing uh a, a uh you, you bringing this character back here in a couple of days is that true well we're bringing uh not that character that we we sort of retired that that thing but we wanted to keep the the cast obviously but like the energy of the show so we had this idea of like expanding like out but we, yeah we're doing tuesday we have a a, a one shot for monster hearts uh, which we are doing with the gas, which is fun. But the entire, like, we decided after Salt Bay ended, because we're like, we've done, we've had like a year or and a half of these characters, like, we don't know where to take them anymore. They've done everything. It's like, but we want to do something. So we, uh, the, the premise of the show going forward is kind of like this dual layer thing where it's like, we're going to do these like sort of longer campaigns. But above that is the idea that our characters are fey creatures imbuing mortal creatures with their spirit to go on adventures as entertainment and then like between these campaigns we go back to the fey realm and it's like this sort of meta commentary about not just putting yourself into role play but also streaming content because like like the audience of the fey is watching this adventure play out and doesn't have huge st so that's like the premise going <laughs> forward that we want to take the show Oh, that's awesome! Uh, you know, and, and as a as a as a lover of pirates, I I will I will definitely be excited to check out the show on 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 Tuesday night and uh, the following ones. Um, aside from that, I uh, I also hear uh, that there's this little thing called uh, the old board and barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, tell tell me tell me a little bit about that and where people can see this. Uh, that is on my my good friend uh, Kyle McCarley's Twitch channel, uh, which is his twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley. It, uh, we started out, we've been like, like most, like the other three guys on the show have known each other since they grew up in Kansas, but we all live out here and we've been playing board games. Like it was, we used to have a board game night literally twice a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we were just like, what if we just like did this as a thing? So we just got together and started streaming it uh, and like putting, because we all have, like we've like Kyle's a voice actor. Uh, I'm I'm a streamer. One of my other buddies is uh, he does AV work professionally. Like we all have all these skill sets, and we're like we could do something kind of you know more interesting than the average. That you know we know we have the the technology and the know how to slap together a stream that looks somewhat professional. So yeah. let's start doing it. And we just have been doing it this whole time. Uh, we had to switch to remote, obviously, for the last like year. But hopefully, very soon, going back to like playing in front of each other but it's i think it's it's a very similar thing to like part of the reason why a lot of people get into streaming rpgs is like it gives us an excuse to play a board game every week with yeah. with our friends exactly yeah uh yeah what 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 are some of the highlights as far as board games like uh the the biggest thing we did a, a run of clank legacy which took 11 weeks oh wow uh, and it's but it was so it's so much fun uh because like the 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 story aspects if you've not played like clank in, in and of itself is a is a very very tremendous board game there's a bunch of different variants that are all fun and the legacy edition uh it, it uses the acquisitions incorporated license so it's got this like the D, D penny arcade podcast stuff and it's and just like how like the storytelling and and stuff just makes that game so much more fun and like the evolution of the board like with all legacy games like the decisions we make throughout the game change it the same reason why i like rpgs mm -hmm. yeah I, I i've never played that game but uh we, we had our my friend teos on a few weeks back and he he wrote part of the acquisitions inc book so he's a huge fan of the of the that board game and he's been telling me i really need to play it yeah it's uh, yeah clank is probably one of the strongest one of my favorites yeah uh would you do do you have any previews on what you guys are going to be playing next uh i we just we 
I don't know what the next one is. We just finished uh, a, another game of Root, which is a very fun, oh. complicated game because it's it's one of those games that's hard because every because all four of you are playing a different game simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Each each faction you choose plays very different and has different goals, and you're all trying to win. It's it's strange and fun, but yeah, it's it's been nice to like get into the like we're starting to now get into the crunchier board games and stuff we just did nemesis which is a game that i'd been wanting to play for a while it's essentially you're playing an aliens movie but you know not licensed to aliens but that's what it is you just you wake up on a ship and there's there's unnamed alien monsters that are infecting people and slaughtering you and you have to survive and you probably don't <laughs> that's awesome I, I love i love games where there's really there's there's no hope <laughs> like yeah, that's that, that's the game is trying to survive <laughs> i yeah i like i like that going in knowing that that's the case like when i walk in and i was the first one to die in our nemesis game like halfway through and i was like but it felt like a cool moment like my character had run out of ammo had a broken arm and decided like i could try and run and it will probably kill me or i can try and punch this thing and it'll i'll probably die anyways but at least you know maybe i'll take it out with me so i went for the punch and it yeah. did nothing and i died but it felt like a cool way to go out Right? Yeah. No, I'm all about the cool going out in cool ways. I I think that's the best way to to, to, to end you those yeah, guys. I, I I'm in it for the storytelling. I, I I'm not in it to win. I just want oh, yeah. like my character to have a cool arc. And if that arc is their death, the hands of an intruder, that's fine. <laughs> uh, all right. I have a couple more things I want to hit on, and uh, you're gonna stick around for the uh, adventure creating afterwards. So chat, get ready for that. We're gonna we're gonna try to build an adventure in 15 minutes. Uh, not 15 minutes from now, but 15 minutes time wise. And, uh, it's a little longer than that, but you also do some video game streaming. And the reason I bring that up is you have decided to recently, recently, you have recently decided to delve back into world of Warcraft, cla world of Warcraft classic. Uh, how has mm -hmm. that experience been? Cause I, I also had an experience with that recently. Yeah. Like I played it. I, I, I've been playing World of Warcraft since since it came out originally. And I did play. I remember there was a time where like they were like, we're never going to do it. And I did play on a private server a little bit of classic. And I I don't know what it is about it because it's objectively, in my opinion, a worse version of World of Warcraft. I think World of Warcraft is a better, easier, more like less obtuse, more comfortable, enjoyable game to play but there's just something about being in it and just how like the systems and how they work together when you're playing the old one. And you're just like something about this, even though there are a lot of really bad things that they fixed. It's just something like it just feel it's just the nostalgia of it. It's just mm -hmm. it just gets me every time. It, it, yeah. When I went back I, or well back, I, uh, I I didn't play much originally. But whenever I went into World of Warcraft, like, World of Court, yeah. Wow, classic! I, uh, I I had that experience where it felt like the old uh, MMOs that I used to play, uh, but it also had like the you know had the clunky systems. It had the everyone's going for that same spawn, so mm -hmm. uh, it, it was fun to relive that. But I I, I did not get very far, yeah, uh, before I lost interest. And I think because I played RPG servers when I was playing MMOs, and I didn't really see a lot of that in WoW yeah uh, it helps that's why i that's why i made the choice to stream it because i'm like it's it's a nice thing like it's something i don't have to actively pay attention to so i can talk with chat and it's yeah. basically a just chatting stream and it also holds me accountable to keep playing so um also i i saw you occasionally stream destiny 2 i bring this up because i'm a big destiny 2 player i play it a lot and uh tell me why titans are your favorite class uh i uh because while they're standing and getting shot out and have a giant blinking circle, I'm invisible sniping things uh, <laughs> with with my uh, dead reckoning, just like bam, 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 just my cowboy gun, just clicking heads. I'm sorry, you cut out. I, th I heard you say you were playing a hunter. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I'm throwing ice wrong. knives at things. <laughs> Uh, I think Rich is over there dancing in joy that you I, yeah. decided to uh, go Hunter. <laughs> I I I I was a huge fan of Halo, so this feels like what I wanted Halo 4 to be. Yeah. And 
despite how much they they seem to be afraid of telling anyone about the lore i love how how dumb the lore is and how deep it is right it, yeah. they, i wish they wouldn't hide it so much from the player base because it's it's so dumb and so great yeah pretty sure osiris is going bad yeah. uh but we'll we'll see in the next expansion yeah. uh, uh all right well um is there anything else you wanted to shout out before we get into this next bit of chaos that we call building an adventure? No, I think we hit all all, all the things contractually. I had you say, like uh, that. I was yeah. like, I won't do the show unless you do. Yeah, we hit all those. So we did. Okay, yeah. I I, I was going down to check uh, checklist, and I hope you got all those brown M and M's. And yeah. so so with that, we are going to go ahead and jump into our four person scene. I wonder if I cut out while I was doing that. But here we are. Uh, we are going to build an adventure. We have been talking about a lot of things in the show today. Uh, I mean, the easy one would probably be to do something in Dune, but, you know, that's a very political setting. We might not be able to do a one-shot for that. Um, so, oh, was there a kitten update? Hey, Rich, I think you're muted. In fact, I know you're muted because I can see the little mute thing on you. Look at me. I was like being responsible and turning off my mic. Uh, I had a thought <laughs> because during that interview, I heard, I heard you say something very clearly and that I wrote Titans it down. Are the best. That was not it. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I love games where there's no hope. <laughs> We're just trying to survive. <laughs> I do. I, I legit. That's why I love I the 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 aliens RPG. When I got when I read uh -huh. that, I was like, "This is great. This is this is perfect." <laughs> yeah. So our one shot is a level one scenario against a Tarask. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were talking about an Obelix earlier, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love that right so there that's the overwhelming threat and you can't like you know you can't be the tarask at first level you know you're not going to live through the hogger raid right <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's something I lo like uh, another great rpg system delta green as the idea of like we're just people trying to stop the inevitable fall of humanity into madness by otherworldly things which we cannot <laughs> stop but right we have to try. All right, Eric. There's, I mean, I'm there, a big there's... fan as a DM of teaching my players that running is a viable victory condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> uh, Eric, there is uh, two questions in the chat for you. Specifically, one: Have you tried Ten Candles? I have not yet. Oh my god! Yeah, I haven't tried uh, it yeah. either. But it's, it's right up there. It's right up there with uh, what's the one where you play with a Jenga tower? Uh, oh, dread. dread. Yeah, that was my first RPG experience. Oh, was really? it really? Yeah. How beautiful! I love yeah. that game. <laughs> Let's see. And then the the next question is: uh, Everyone is demanding a kitten update. They said you had kittens. Yeah. Well, not me. A cat that I oh. own had kittens. Oh, okay. uh, they're doing good. They're about uh, they're about five weeks old. Uh, one of them climbs on everything. One of them stalks everything. And one of them just is very quiet and very but but won't eat solid food you have to like spoon feed it to her she's very prissy okay wow right. so you've well. got is that fighter bard i would say rogue? i've got i've got <laughs> i've got a bard who's like the adventurer climber or stuff i've got a rogue who sneaks around and then i don't know what i feel like the Maybe like a cleric or a wizard, because she just hangs back, you know. Uh -huh. I, I would say wizard because clerics try to be helpful. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I was thinking sorcerer, who just you know someone who just relies on their charisma to get them. What I they would need. say sorcerer Ooh. fits because because she's the biggest, so she doesn't have to try hard. Like she can push the other ones out of the way to get food. So, <laughs> so is that not is that sorry? Is this just a lazy wow. barbarian then? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Move. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. I love wow. the lazy barbarian. All right. So we're going to set up a scenario. This scenario is going to be one in which, in which our our PCs uh, are sent by uh, Chef Albert D. Oh, of course, of course. To rescue a group who is in an impossible situation i love this there we go okay uh, okay so do they know it's impossible going in do we already know we're doomed are we starship troopers uh um. <laughs> so yeah so i'm, I'm thinking uh chef alberti's like yeah you know uh you're going in there uh i sent some people in there they they weren't quite up to snuff you need to go in and rescue them and there's a good chance 
not all of you will make it out alive. Okay. 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 But so, it's, it's worth it because the chef wants us to do it, you know, for the good yeah. of the kitchen. For the good of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What, I mean, why did chefs, why did chefs send, uh, yeah. Why, why did chefs send the first group? Perhaps oh, yeah. chef wants a very rare and hard to procure ingredient. All right. Or say right. a soup, perhaps. Yeah, that's perfect. Indeed. He's always making soup, always looking for ingredients. Uh, what we is never this? know what's in it. What is this? What is this? Why? Oh, yeah. Uh, it is. It does turn out to be a hostage situation. <laughs> it, it definitely. I. It needs to be spice, right? It's yeah, it the needs, spice. It is it, the spice. Very. What's agreed. in it? I don't know. It's the yeah. spice. This. There's this worm. You know. Yeah. The spice. Of... Oh, we're throwing a purple worm in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A bunch of people are extracting some rare spice from purple worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Oh, and the reason it's almost impossible is you have to go into the purple worm to save them. Yeah. They oh. Got oh. <laughs> We're... Beautiful. Uh, they have to go inside the purple worm. Oh, here's uh, we can take a we can take a deep blue sea element where it's like this spice like they don't generate much. So some wizard has like genetically modified these these uh, these worms to be to produce more spice, thus giving them full sentience. So thus oh, it's yes. now a hostage situation. Oh. Like the purple worms are like like are fully sentient. Oh wow, <laughs> I like this. Going. So purple like worms. Oh, purple. now I've got deep blue sea. So now Samuel L. Jackson has to die partway through the movie. Yeah. Um, so like the, the oh, first oh. team maybe is inside, but they're trapped. And so we have to go in um, and yeah. Uh, what are the mod gen genetically modified purple <laughs> worms? What are they demanding? What are their demands? They're holding hostages. What are their demands? Uh, equal share in, in, in corporate profits. They, it's their labor, their bodies being used to create. Shouldn't they have equal say in, in, in all monetary decisions yeah i mean no, may day I, I, was yesterday so this is very this is very topical right. <laughs> oh my gosh so <laughs> all right so so these purple worms are demanding equal share in corporate profits and uh they're being denied it and so they're holding our adventurers hostage so i feel like yeah. this is leading us to a we need to help rescue those adventures b we need to get those worms to unionize. Right. I really feel like w the leader of the first party was like a professor of economics and just like walked in and was like, wow, the worms should get like 50% share in this. And the worms are like, tell me more. <laughs> just yeah. And they just learned economics and now they're masters of it. <laughs> this is great. Uh, oh, it's, it is. The, worm, uh, the worms are masters of economics now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to like they even talk to the party a bunch about how are you just going on missions for this chef? I mean, what are you yeah. really getting back from that? What's your what's your equity like? Yeah. What's your overhead and how much are you being paid? Yeah. <laughs> You're expected to pay all revivification costs? Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that should totally be a write-off. What does your explorer uh, exploration society contract look like? Freelance. Oh, Ooh. okay. Ooh. That's a... mm. <laughs> uh, I just want the worms to say a couple times in this economy, and that's <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no. Uh, do you work for exposure? That was. <laughs> That is one of my favorite like <laughs> things when I'm running a game where someone's like, you have to stop these evil like trolls. And then they show up and the trolls are like, we just want a fair shake. And then the PCs are like, um, I'm getting paid to murder you, though. But like, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. And then you're like, I mean, it's like, can we just kill them? You're like, yes, you perfectly can if you want to. <laughs> right. That's what that's how you want to solve this. Go ahead. I, 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 I the it. same thing with the purple worms. Do we do you kill them to resolve the hostage crisis or do you like help them to unionize? <laughs> Yeah. Right, you you walk them over like immediately to to an office where they can uh you know start the unionization like I don't know legislation they can start talking to uh to the leaders nearby the local leaders yeah um, okay well let's uh, let's let's start oh this is great scene, scene one <laughs> uh, chef sends the 
second group of adventurers. <laughs> Why does <laughs> maybe Chef should stop sending the adventurers places? Uh, he sends the, the 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 second group of adventurers um, through the portal. Uh, the portal. And they land in a scene that looks like what? All right. So what is the the so so the initial scene is you know of course I'm talking with Chef Alberti. Chef Alberti sends them off. But what is the first encounter? Like they go through. Yeah. Could it be the French Revolution is happening? They go through this portal, and oh. maybe they're maybe they're in the midst. Uh, the the PCs fall. Uh, in the midst of a civil war. Yeah, you, oh. you drop them in and there's a bunch of humanoids fighting off a purple worm and they're like, oh, we have to help these people who are clearly the uh, fighting a monster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me do... Oh, man. Either that or it could be a faction war between the lavender worms and the fuchsia worms. I do like uh, a bunch of humanoids uh, no, that's yeah, yeah fight, fighting <laughs> fighting off a a pur a giant purple worm mm -hmm. uh and so the pcs have to choose a side right uh the pcs have yeah, to choose I mean, side. Bef before they even have a chance to really talk all they see have is the information and people who they know how to communicate with going help us and exactly right. oh yeah 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 mm -hmm. so exactly uh it's expected that they joined the humanoids at this point. I mean, alternatively, in, in mid-fight, well, not even alternatively, like mid-fight, perhaps the worm could demonstrate intelligence by using like boulders from the surroundings as yeah. weapons, like showing knowledge of tools to show, this ain't your normal mindless purple worm. Yeah, yeah. you can be right. like on a, on a DC 20 perception check or whatever system you're using, you know, it's like you, you notice that there's something like, almost sentient about the way that this thing is moving. It's not an instinctual attack or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. so have, have PCs make an intelligence perception style check. I uh, think insight might almost be the like insight, yeah. the most yeah. correct for that. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. like that. Oh. Like like the purple worm is specifically attacking like the the, the leader of the group, like, like uh -huh. the one who's not fighting back or something. <laughs> oh, and the worm isn't uh, purposely killing anyone. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's a good move. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like something that large and that dangerous is just knocking people out with non-lethal blows instead of like going straight for the kill. I like I yeah. like it a lot. I, I almost like the idea that there was a, a protest, like a huge scene going on here during this revolution, and the purple worm like kind of wanted to stop it, maybe. Like, hey everybody, stop fighting. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all on the same team. We just have different beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. About Maybe economic. the worm has like a giant sign on its back that the party can't see that says violence doesn't solve anything. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I like the I like that twist from uh, Adventures of Tony. Is adventuring party uh, one shows up to help the purple worms. Oh, yeah. The the uh, the, the party Ooh. one shows up and they're like, stop, you know, and they f start fighting the PCs. That's, yeah, that's a great end to that. Like, encounter. I do like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. to help the purple worm. Uh. And the PCs have to decide which side they are supporting now, right? Because it's that's pretty smart. Because they, they can't win against the purple worm, right? I mean, so I love the I idea mean, that what, another party is coming in to tell them we're like knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so you 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 and the and the 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 real bad guys are fighting the purple worm. Uh, but you're starting to see that the purple worm's not actually killing anybody. Mm -hmm. And then the adventurers that you were sent here to help, that you thought this was a horrible hostage situation, they come and they help the purple worm. So what do you do when you see other Exploration Society members helping the purple worm? Well, then, of course, you join the fight with the purple worm and push back the enemies. And then uh, that, I think, leads us to scene two. I think okay. in this scene, one of the original adventuring party people is able to uh, either telepathically communicate with spells or has perhaps it has a way of broadcasting, speak with animals to everyone yeah. so that everyone can understand the speech of the purple worm and you hear their plight. Yeah. So okay. this will be, yeah, scene yeah. two will be a conversation. Like 
Uh, yeah, I like the idea, especially like if a purple worm can communicate, but not in traditional means. Like it's like, like you get like still images or like you can just describe feelings and sensations. And it's like that you interpret, it, you know, because it doesn't yeah. it doesn't share our our need for vocal communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of like subsonic like just vibrations. <laughs> I like this. Uh... And I, you know. This is a good, also a good reason for the other party to not get involved in the rest of it. Like they're they're here, they're they're on the side of this purple worm. They can tell you where to go. But like this one just got hurt. You you heard it. Uh, we're gonna stay and take care of it a little bit. You know, we're friends now. Um, here, you all head off <laughs> that <Yeah>. way. <laughs> okay, and then so scene three, they head off to go and do what? What are they? What are they asked to? I think I I would like if it had like a like if they go to like whatever corporate manager wizard character or whatever who's in charge whoever's in charge of like extracting the spice and then it becomes like mm -hmm. they have the like look i've got investors i've got you know it's like i then it becomes like avatar it's like i'm not trying to kill all these purple worms but like i this is this is business this is how it works and and they can offer the solutions like, yeah, if you like give a purple worm this potion, it'll no longer have sentience. And then it won't care if you're taking this thing. Like it'll pacify, like it'll be best for everybody. You know, Ooh. I also like the idea of a side objective thing where a parent, where it maybe if they explore the wizard tower can't clandestinely, they can find the spell that accidentally made the purple worm sentient. And that could be an alternate win condition for like giving, making all the purple worms sentient. I like that. Wow. Oh, this is so good. I like that now they have so many choices about what they're going to do. Like you've just given them the option of being like, well, forget that book. We want the spice. The, the chef wants the spice. We could just, yeah, it's just like, we could a, just join the, the bad the villains. Game. Yeah. They're like uh -huh. three factions you can choose from. None of them are great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a good question. The, the purple worms who have intelligence, right? The ones who are at the moment kind of like our heroic faction. I mean, they're trapped. They're being harvested for the spice. I mean, there's still purple worms, right? They're still out to destroy kind of like most things, or have they grown past that? <laughs> I, I don't know. Did they? I, I mean, once they get sentience, are they still trying to destroy everything? Or do they just want equal rights? Yeah, or or it's like their like concept of like, like we are just trying to make it in this world same as everyone else. This is how we survive is doing like what you see as destructive as our like is is us living. Right. Like we gotta right. eat. Like yeah. We gotta eat something. How do you so, think the spice gets made? Right, <laughs> fair. Like maybe a deal is kind of like you know it could be possible. You know we'll save you, but again, this this region, this town over here, this is like a you you can't rampage in this town. Like <laughs> we'll give yeah. you this part of the desert for free. Go run through. I got to do it in my head still. Um, so so I th I think yeah whatever what it, so uh, here's here's my notes for scene three. They head off to go to talk to the corporate manager. Uh, they can try to work jobs. with the corporate manager to uh, stop harvesting of the spice. Uh, they could try to find an alternative source for the spice. Uh, they, let's see here, what else did we get in there? Uh, they could uh, take sentience away from the worms. They could give sentience to all the purple worms. And the purple worms kind of just want jobs. Uh, right. So we, we, we <laughs> can kind of work all of this out. But so for scene four, so so you work something out. I'm going to assume most PCs are going to do something like give the all there very few of them are going to take them away. Uh yeah. if they take them away then the, the uh the storyteller is up a creek but scene I imagine four, like yeah PCs <laughs> are heading like, back. the rest of the one shot becomes a a a, a, a lecture on moral ethics. Exactly. <laughs> I imagine like whatever the choice is it it ends in a big fight. I mean, it's just who we're fighting changes yeah. dramatically. Yeah. 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 All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for that raid, the dungeon run. Oh, thanks. hey, hey! <laughs> thanks, thanks for bringing more people here. We're just, uh, yeah, we're, we're just uh, writing an adventure. Uh, totally so, normal adventure. <laughs> so now in scene four, so scene four, the PCs are heading back to tell the purple worms the good news that everybody's going to be friends. We're all going to hang out, but the issue is that not everybody wants that. So I think the PCs. Are gonna have a uh, combat encounter. Okay. Uh, encounter with the uh, anti per oh not Annie the anti 
Anti. <laughs> I anti warned you about this. Uh, anti purple worm union oh. faction. I thought you were saying like auntie, and I was like, "What's yeah. what are where are we going right now?" <laughs> yeah, no, it's the uh, so our APWF. adventurers are now trust busters, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. then you get you get into the bit. It's like we've got like it's like listen, I understand that these these creatures have been mutated and now think and feel, but this is, this is my job. This is how I feed my family. This is like, this, the, like, this is what our town has done for, you know, this many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I like that. So oh, that's interesting because that, you know, that means I probably don't want to, I want to teach them the wrongs, right. That they have been doing. I want them to, to embrace this new, reality that we've created here in this town i probably don't want to like just kill them all out of hand yeah i like <laughs> I, I like messy solutions like nobody yeah. is a hundred percent good or bad in this situation they're all just people yeah. making the best they can they're just trying to survive in a game where there's no hope oh, wait no we're bringing them hope yeah. it's fine yeah <laughs> there and... can be a little hope in this <laughs> yeah. but we're bringing <laughs> hope to one faction but the rest are kind of <laughs> SOL. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, if they're working together, they can produce even more, you know? Yeah, and so you, the, never the know what you never know what your PCs are going to throw at you and be like, yeah. solve this in 20 minutes. And you're like, oh, cool. I get, yeah, that does make perfect sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so I love the ability. They, they bring their economics textbooks. They slam them on the table right on top of their players' handbooks. And they're like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, well, in the world, Carl Marx. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do like uh, the the note in the chat. Okay, can giant birds show up to eat the worms? <laughs> oh, we got some rocks going in here. Oh man! You, you know what? You know that's. I mean, maybe that's perfect. Maybe that's how we how we wrap this up. Is uh, you know, the, scene the question five. Is, are they early? Right. Uh... <laughs> Let's see here. Well, so, they're late from this whole sorry. story. I think they're actually pretty late at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Mid five. Seed <laughs> five. The uh, the rocks uh, rocks, rocs, rocks rock our PCs. <laughs> okay, I like this. So you're just making sure we get a pretty nasty combat in here at some point because we've been promising one. There was like a small. Like there was a moment where we thought we were going to face down a purple worm, and then it didn't happen. We got stopped. <laughs> And yeah. now we're talking to more purple worms, and oh, you got talked down. I imagine, yeah, <laughs> this is the moment where it's like, what, like the end of it, whatever happens, like the corporate leadership has forced this encounter upon everyone. So it's like, no more, no more. I don't know. It's like you have, like first of all, you have to stop these things, whatever they are, and then in doing so, you're making your choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The wizard has summoned the rocks yeah. to put an end to the union rebellion. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like it. And they can smell what you're cooking. A nasty wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> yep. uh, a, a nasty old wizard. Oh, can they know what the chef is cooking? Because he needs uh, spice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, calls <laughs> Been here the whole time for to it. Yeah. attack the worms and PCs because he oh just hates things without arms. <laughs> and yell, and he yells. And he yells, can you smell what my rocks are cooking? There it is. Okay. <laughs> Boom. <Thank you. laughs> everyone, everyone at the table stands up and slow claps for you when you say that exactly. line. <laughs> it's either that or they all groan and leave. <laughs> they're going to get one of those two extremes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You're trying to get them to roll initiative, but they they can't stop clapping. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is a so mess good. of invention. Uh, I like it though. I love it. I, I I've loved every one that we've done. All it's right. just I love that it's messy. I love that we're getting in here and we're messing up um, capitalism. We that, we've done that like two two times this month already, and I love it <laughs> every time. <laughs> I, I I feel like there's a really uh, anti corporate greed um, like uh, feeling among the people that we enjoy. So yes. <laughs> I I uh, amongst I, um, millennials. What? <laughs> I, I am unsurprised. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> oh man, that's I mean that's so good. That's uh, yeah, like oh man, we're gonna have just a, so by 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 the time we get to like a, another year of doing this show, we're just gonna have a notebook full of like all these short adventures that are all about taking down the man, and it's I it's, know. It's fantastic, and I love it. And we're also going to have a deranged owl bear chef that keeps sending young adventurers to strange places for ingredients. <laughs> yeah. so, is, so is he the real big bad evil guy of the entire collection? No, or, should be. <laughs> or is it just like is it someone operating at such a, like a high int intellectual level that they know that by sending these adventuring parties they are fixing the world? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, I did speak to Chef Albert D about this, and he said that his ultimate plan was. Hold on, what? You cut out. But what? Uh, but, and, can... and, but, but, and then everyone's going to be enjoying soup together. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. You cut out yeah. a little. Yeah. I read oh, your lips, yeah, though. The, when the, you the, that that your ominous lips. cut out definitely yeah. did not, uh, yeah. <laughs> did not <laughs> foreshadow anything. I, I read lips pretty well, so I did hear you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I need your soundboard. Uh... <laughs> oh, did you catch uh, the part where the main ingredient in the owlbear soup is? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> oh, wow. What's the name of this adventure? Uh, I mean, the early bird gets the worm is potentially one. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the early worm flips the bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, a spicy something could also work. <laughs> a spicy something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. A spicy something. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just, oh, I was just looking the... up movies about worms and it oh, didn't go well. I do. I, oh, no. <laughs> I like that one. As the worms turn. Or as, as the worm turns. I love it. Thank you. Uh, that is the title of this adventure. Solid. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you can look for it in our next Kickstarter happening, uh, you know, sometime in like three years. Uh, right. So, you know, <laughs> get, get, get ready to, to purchase it, put the money aside. Uh, it's going to launch any, any millennia now. Yeah, it's going to come uh, <laughs> along with a book of recipes uh, that I, yeah. I don't know if I recommend for human consumption, but no. <laughs> it'll have recipes. <laughs> but our uh, great level bear. one adventurer is just getting their start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're an there though, perfect. Nothing new. Perfect. Nothing new. Yeah, it's, it's so it's, good. It's, 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 yeah. uh, all right, Eric Ross, it has been so fantastic to have you on the show. Uh, and uh, help, help, thanks for helping us write this great adventure for Chef Albert D. Uh, one more time, uh, Eric, where can folks find you on the internets? Uh, they can find me mostly Eric on all the social media and also on Twitch where I stream video games. Sweet. And Ross, where can folks uh, find you? You can find me on Twitter at Atland Advent PR, or you can probably just find me with just Ross Lies, or I'll probably come up. It's a pretty unique name. Uh, and then from there, in the pinned tweet on my profile, there are links to both my Discord and my Patreon. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you guys so much. And uh, you guys were fantastic. And uh, I hope to have you back again soon. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. I would love that. All right. <laughs> Uh, my face hurts. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, well, your face is killing me. So it is time. Right. <laughs> uh, man, Rich, we we had a uh, we we had another couple of great guests. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, everybody, really make was. sure to check out uh, check out Ross and all his cool DMG stuff. Also, stick yes. around to see uh, Lenny. Uh, continue to grow as a character <laughs> and uh <laughs> and yeah in, just in, went in like 20 pantheon. minutes yeah, right a new pantheon yeah <laughs> uh rich uh let's uh let's let's kick it to you first where can folks find you and what kind of things do you have coming up like a certain kickstarter that's coming tomorrow Yep, that's coming tomorrow. That's right. Uh, tomorrow is the launch of the second summer camp for the Academy of Adventures. So if you've got kids out there who want to learn how to play D&D &D or just have a good, you know, 
awesome adventure. Um, uh, come and check that out. The, the summer camp runs uh, in week-long sets. We give teams of five kids at a time a uh, chance to learn how to play the game, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's starting tomorrow. Uh, there's also, of course, the last Kickstarter I did, the uh, the Twills Twist Points. Um, this little little book right here uh, is going to be coming Ooh. out pretty darn soon. I'm sending it to print uh, later tonight, actually. So we'll awesome. have some physical copies ready to send out into the world uh, within the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Oh, and, and you, then... you can find me on Twitter at Armelina. Of course. Yep. <laughs> uh, and you can also follow both of us at Owlbear Soup. Um, uh, I stream several times a week here on Twitch at DJ Pirate Rabbits. You can also find me on Twitter at DJ Pirate Rabbits or to hit AC zero. Uh, depends on what kind of chatting you want to see. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and we'll be back next week. So uh, once again, thank you all so much. Uh, remember to set your crock pots to warm and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.